Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be looking at the Imperial Japanese Army. A very fierce army, we know this, and their training is very much rich. And we're going to be looking at the various disciplines from, of course, army men and even civilians and how they learn. So, uh, obviously, I don't have to state the obvious regarding what happened. I'm just going to talk about their training and of course athleticism moral and virtue and of course uh, jita kyoe and the principles of judo will always reign higher um, this army i've been looking for a very long time for their footage and to see how they train and i finally have my hands uh, on one and you're gonna see it's not very surprising of course but uh, you're gonna see that a lot of the discipline and how they even prepare for the battlefield uh, itself so it's not just in the dojo and then all of a sudden you're good to go no so uh, as you know a lot of kenjutsu and kendo is in the military training and that is thanks to the batotai uh, story I'm, I'm sure a lot of you know what it is uh, there is a lot of mix of weapons so it's not just sword against sword but they even do the staff against the sword or the sword against the short sword against the bayonet with the rifle etc so this is uh, something known as ishu jiai where they mix the weapons disciplines together and have them fight each other this still goes on till this day and it is something i would say very rich because it allows you to Go up against different stances and of course different ranges for example the tan ken or the short bamboo sword that you use is far shorter than the bayonet of course the stance is also different the same for the shinai which is the bamboo sword used in kendo so these types of uh, sparring they will allow you to experience different ranges and work your I would say all your angles basically and they will prepare you for a lot of these fast lightning stabs and thrusts and strikes down your head and of course your torso so Ishu Jiai is very important for the uh, army here you see uh, round after round relentlessly and protective gear so it makes it safe and you can do it basically all day and every day uh, other things of course they're gonna be uh, your grappling so it's important to know or these for example these field fights which are absolutely <laughs> insane i'm sure a lot of people would like to participate in these but you're not gonna get out you know and not hurt of course you're gonna get hurt second one is of course it's gonna be grappling, uh, especially in judo and sumo, um, jujitsu, depending on the area of the country. But it's mostly judo since the 1880s, when they won their uh, competitions against other schools to establish themselves as the best school, and their methodology is still carried on it till this day. So, jujitsu and uh, judo are very uh, important grappling and at the same time with your weapons fighting these uh, lightning fast strikes and here you see of course uh, women were trained mostly in naginata since centuries ago and if you think about it they're somewhat of the last line of defense in case of a hostile takeover the men lost the battle they retreated what's left is of course the women and children and you're gonna see that they even play a role but uh, I just want to say that uh, regardless of what this army stood for Jigoro Kano was apolitical and even uh, opposed this type of uh, philosophies that the Imperial Army had uh, put and to say that he was you know, pro expansionism etc it's not true at all it goes against Jita Kyoe and uh, of course like I mentioned uh, it is the children that go last and 
of course there is training of the battlefield here uh, how you charge how you always position yourself reenacting the battle you have to carry things maybe you're injured uh, team not teammate uh, an injured injured soldier you have to carry them you have to carry supply back and forth uh, a lot of these very hectic and stressful drills of course they can be very important this in front of you here is i would say peak athleticism uh how many of you know a lot of law enforcement or whatever that are just simply out of shape even people in the army that are out of shape unfortunately they should be going through a lot of this this is incredibly important you're carrying your gear with you you're climbing you're jumping uh, if you look at old World War I footage, for example, the Austro-Hungarians, you see them also skiing in the mountains, just things that are absolutely incredible to watch, great feat of athleticism and endurance and things that are great to train. It's not just, you know, go in the dojo and go out and that's it. No, you have to be familiar with the landscape. Look at them, they're skiing while uh, transporting their equipments uh, with them so training is very rigorous very hard and not a lot of armies do it I would say so uh, it's uh, very good to see this just to have a little bit of perspective again just gliding down the mountain skiing and coming up also as well so all these things that you see are just incredible it's not just oh what what do they train in is it just grappling and hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat no it's a lot of things um, here you see uh, middle school girls training the bayonet and uh, bolt uh, rifles um, shooting them you know learning how to aim how to go down because a lot of places even if you go in the past women and children are the last lines of defense they have to learn how to shoot a gun when they come for their houses uh, they don't have to necessarily be last line of defense sometimes uh, invading armies go straight to your house so you need to be uh, well prepared but i cannot imagine you know being a high school kid or a middle school uh, kid and then going and you know you learn how to shoot these rifles which is you know crazy to think about but uh, that was the world back then especially with with what was happening so um, but again when it comes to judo and politics i think you should only apply the two principles mutual prosperity for self and others and of course maximum efficiency so um, whatever that uh, army did or the atrocities etc jigoro kano did not condone any of it and it's a dark part of history so it's its own thing i'm not gonna discuss these but mainly what the army trained i find it very fascinating and if you see the athleticism and of course the training in martial arts it's all just great to watch so if you have anything to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening